And a very pleasant good evening, everyone, from the Beaverdam High School Fieldhouse. Daily Dodge TV presents Beaverdam High School Golden Beaver Boys Basketball. And tonight, it's game number two on the young season for the Golden Beavers. And it's also the conference opener in the Badger Large, the Blackhawks of Fort Atkinson are in town to take on your Beaverdam Golden Beavers. Hi again, everybody. Mike Tronson with you inside the Fieldhouse. And I'm joined on site by my videographer and engineer, Charlie Dern. And we welcome you to this broadcast, which is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Board, Beaverdam, Mayville Tire and Service, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM in Beaver Dam, and White Construction. Welcome into our pregame show, everyone. Glad to have you with us on this Tuesday night. As I mentioned, it is game number two for the Golden Beavers, and they got their season off to a winning start this past Saturday during the second annual 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam Slam at the Dam. The Golden Beavers with a win over Madison West, 79 to 41. Big game for JT Call. He had 25 points to lead the Golden Beavers in scoring, but they had actually four players in double figures. EJ Salatel, 13 for BD, Jack Jens a dozen, and Parker Blank with a solid 11 points as Beaverdam cruised to victory in that one and start the year with a win. Meanwhile, for Fort Atkinson, this is their first game of the year. They have not played yet, so it's game number one for the Blackhawks. It's conference game number one, as I mentioned, and of course, a kind of a revamped Badger conference this season. Gone are the Badger East and Badger West leagues. And now you've got the Badger Large and the Badger Small. And of course, these two teams are both in the Badger Large Conference. The other teams in the conference with these two, DeForest, Milton, Monona Grove, Oregon, Watertown, and Wanakee. The teams in the Badger Small include Baraboo, Edgewood, McFarland, Mount Horeb, Portage, Reedsburg, Sauk Prairie, and Stoughton. So a little bit of a revamped Badger Conference, if you will. East and West are gone. Large and small are in. And the other thing that uh, changes this year, it's, it's more of a traditional conference schedule. You're going to play everybody in your league twice. Last year, you may remember the last couple of years, they, they tried that system where they, they had two four-team pods in each league, and you ended up playing each team in your pod twice. You played each team in the other pod in your league once, and you played each team in one of the two pods in the other conference once. And then there was a, based on how you finished in the pods, the winners of the pods would then play a conference championship. Well, that's gone, folks. Now it's basically you play everybody home and away, teams with the best record, your conference champs. I think a lot of people are probably pleased with that as it's going to make life a lot simpler as far as that goes. But uh, these two teams, the last time they played was back on February 3rd of last year, and that was here in this building, and Fort Atkinson got the win. 50 to 46, the final in that one. So Beaver Dam looking to uh, kind of avenge that loss. I know it was last year, probably doesn't mean a whole lot now, but at the same time, you know, still could be lurking in the backs of the minds of these players. As, uh, you know, the same thing with the coaches. I talked with Tim Ladron. He said, yeah, he says, you know, we did not play well that night and we need to come out with a lot of energy here tonight. Last year, Ford Atkinson 
10 and 15 overall. Beaver Dam was 11 and 14 last season. Both of these squads lost in regional play at the end of the season. Right now, we're going to step aside when we come uh, when we come back. You'll hear some comments from Tim Ladron. He's the head coach of the Golden Beavers. We'll play the interview for you right after this, but right now we'll take a two-minute break. Back in two minutes on Daily Dodge TV. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Air Care and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our total care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. Air Care's total care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. Air Care, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. The teams at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service are growing and adding service technicians and auto lube technicians. Work in a clean shop environment with a fun and friendly team that is committed to excellence and customer satisfaction. Competitive pay based on experience, full benefits, including health, dental, 401k. Join the growing team at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service. Find full job postings on Facebook or visit either location to submit your resume. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Cheer! Now, cheer louder. Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it's a commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. And we continue our pregame programming. We're inside the Beaver Dam High School Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson standing by with Tim Ladron, head coach of the Golden Beavers. And Tim, it's great to see you. Uh, my first look at your club. This is game two, though, for you. And uh, an impressive win on Saturday here in the Fieldhouse over Madison West. I didn't get a chance to see it. What's your assessment of uh, that, that victory? And what, what were you most pleased with? Yeah, I mean, a good opening win. Um, you know, Madison West was a little bit down, had one really, really nice player. I thought we did a nice job on. Um, I thought offensively we moved the ball as well as we have in a long time. I, you know, and um, that was pretty key to our offense. A lot of guys scoring the basketball. We had four guys in double digits. Uh, great effort, great intensity. We looked like just another game. So it looked like we looked really under control. I mean, obviously there's things you got to clean up, but uh, pretty solid for us op uh, opening game. You know, just looking at the roster, good core group from last year yeah. returning. Uh, so you've got a lot of guys back that have a lot of experience. That's got to excite you a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, all three of those seniors, this is their fourth year of RC basketball. So we mentioned that in the beginning, you know, on Saturday was, you know, we're going to rely on that exp on, on your experience. And, you know, then JT get, comes out and has a big first half. And, you know, Cameron and Jack are doing what they do, just being physical and playing really hard basketball. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that our front six, Parker Blank, E.J. Salatel, and Parker Stoby, I mean, those guys all have really significant varsity minutes in their back pocket. So, um, you know, we're really happy with that, and now it's just a matter of trying to find, you know, where the rest of that rotation lies. You know, you know what they can do, and, and obviously they played well in the past, but do you, especially these upperclassmen, do you, at the beginning of the season, you maybe challenge them a little bit to, okay, we got to step it up, step up your game even more? Yeah, I think so. But the other thing it also does for us, it gives us kind of like a head start a little bit because they, you know, they they know what we want to do. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different things on both ends of the floor that they're already comfortable with, and so we just need to be able to. Uh, it, it allows us to, to continue to build off of what we were doing before, and so just kind of gives us that kind of 
that extra edge, I think, early in the year, but also we're relying on them for that leadership as well. I also look on the roster and see a couple of sophomores and a junior that are newcomers. I don't know how much we'll see them, at least off the bat, but what do they bring to the table for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, first from the junior class, uh, Jeffrey Freund, um, you know, is going to see some significant minutes for us. Really good athlete, long, uh, you know, can guard inside, can guard outside. We're really happy with him. Um, you know, Max Ludkees, about 6'3", um, you know, backup big for us. And, you know, does a really, he's like a 100% effort type kid that really does a lot for us. Uh, see, so he's got a chance to see some minutes. Um, and then... Uh, the Riley and Matthew Doyle, the other juniors who are really good kids, and they, they work really hard, both guards that are getting better, uh, both shoot the ball pretty well. Um, out of the sophomore class, we've got Nick Krasinski uh, and Cruz Rohde, uh, who are both seeing minutes on the JV as well, who are both really solid physical guards, who bring a lot to the table. And then freshman Jackson Ladron, my son, who brings a lot to the table as well when it comes to de the defensive side and shoots the ball awfully well. So, um, you know, so we've got, we really like where, where our depth is at. Um, as far as who those kids are and what they bring to the table. It's just a matter of us finding what that mix and match is here as early in the season. Jumping right into conference play tonight with uh, a game against Fort Atkinson. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Blackhawks? What, uh, what do you have to do to be successful? Well, I'm first say this. I hate the fact that we play a conference game this early. I mean, you know, they haven't played yet, yeah. you know, so we, we've, we all, we've got to scrimmage stuff on them. And so... Um, doesn't make a whole lot of sense from a conference standpoint, but we are where we are. So, um, you know, they've got two really nice players to start out that played a lot of minutes last year. Uh, Owen Geiger is a really nice athletic kid who, who get up and down the floor, plays a little point for them, uh, does a little bit of everything. Just a really, really solid athletic player. And then Lakin Hintz, left-handed shooter, if you remember last year, destroyed us. Uh, he had big shot after big shot after big shot at us last year down the stretch. Uh, those two guys are, are focal points, but they've got some size. They're going to start 6'7", 6'5", 6'3", so that obviously presents a problem for us. Yeah, they, they got you last year, and uh, so, I mean, obviously it doesn't mean anything now, but at the same time, kind of maybe lurking in the back of your mind a little bit, maybe the players too? Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, that was a, dis you know, that was a disappointing loss for us. We did not play very well, and I give them credit. They played very well, and, um, you know, that's that one that kind of stuck with us a little bit, and uh, we were luckily, luckily enough, we could kind of rebound and got that big double overtime win over Milton right after that. But that was that was a tough one for us, and our guys remember that for sure. Well, I'm looking forward to it tonight and all season. Tim, good luck to you and the boys, and thanks for your time. Do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. All right, that's Tim Ladron, head coach of Beaver Dam. We'll step aside, and we're back after this on Daily Dodge TV. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school a each month. Oh, Jerry's listening. Automotive also provides exceptional one, vehicle two, service one, and two, repairs three. and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Is selling your home like a walk in the park? If you are in Central Park at 2 a.m., maybe. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. When it is time to sell, be it due to loss or love, growth or downsizing, staying near or going far, there are three basic steps. List it, sell it, move on. The steps are made simple by working with a trusted real estate advisor. Our family team is with you every step of the way, making those three steps as smooth and fun as possible. Kladowski Real Estate. We look forward to serving you.
Welcome back inside the field house. We apologize for some technical problems. Let's give you the starting lineups first for Ford Atkinson. The guards are Caleb Enger, a 6'1 junior, along with Owen Geiger, a 6'3 junior, and Lakin Hintz, six feet tall and a junior. Forwards are Brennan Dempsey, a 6'5 junior, along with Ben Evans, 6'7 and a junior. Again, for Ford Atkinson, it's Enger, Geiger, Hintz, Dempsey, and Evans. Now for Beaver Dam, the guards are E.J. Salatel, a six-foot-two-inch sophomore, along with J.T. Call, six-one senior, Parker Stobie, a five-nine junior. The forwards are Jack Jens, a six-three senior, and Cameron Mendoza, six-three senior. Again for the Golden Beavers, Salatel, Call, Stobie, Jens, and Mendoza. As you can see on your video screen, the Beaver Dam Golden Beavers in their home white jerseys and shorts, the green numbers, the green and yellow trim, Fort Atkinson in black jerseys and shorts with some white and red trim, black numbers with a white outline around them. In the first half, Fort Atkinson will go left to right as you see it. Beaver Dam will go right to left across your TV screen. Send us an email tonight if you get a chance, sports at dailydodge.com. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. Put boys basketball in the subject line so I know it's you. But again, uh, sports at dailydodge.com. Here we go. Jump ball at center. As it'll be Ben Evans and Cameron Mendoza to jump it. Tap controlled by the Blackhawks. And this game is underway here inside the field house. And Beaver Dam's out in early man-to-man -man defense. And this is Owen Geiger at the top of the key. Bounce pass taken by Enger. Caleb Enger. Driving to the right wing, had it knocked out of his hand, stolen. That's JT Call with a quick steal. 20 seconds gone by. No score as of yet, but it's very early in this one. And here we go as Call works the right side, ran into a double team, fell down, tried to get it over to Salatel on the far sideline in front of the Fort Atkinson bench. It goes out of bounds. Each team with an early turnover. 30 seconds in, no score as of yet. And once again, here is Enger on the drive. Pull up Jay from about 15 feet away, and that's good. Caleb Enger. So it's 2-0 in favor of Fort Atkinson. Less than a minute gone by here in the opening stanza. Driving call, kicks it out. Mendoza, wide open three on the elbow. It is no good, and the box out and rebound for the Blackhawks. But they turn it right over. Back the other way, a two-on-one. Salatel takes the pass, missed the layup. It was in and out, no good. And a defensive board for the Blackhawks. Here is Hintz, out now high on the right for Inger. <coughs> Coming off a screen, left side, here's a free throw line, extended jumper, it's off the rim, no. And the rebound for Mendoza. That one off the miss by Owen Geiger. Salatel, deep three, right side, bullseye! E.J. Salatel from town, Beaver Dam. He had 13 points the other night in the win over Madison West to open the season. He's got his first three tonight. He shot 31% from behind the arc last year. 3-2, Beaver Dam leads by one. A minute and 48 seconds gone by. Here is a three-pointer on the way. Dempsey off the iron, no good from the right wing. And J.T. with the rebound for the Golden Beavers. A little hesitation will be... Goes underhanded shot off the back iron, no good. And a defensive rebound is pulled down by Ben Evans. Now on the right side corner, three ball, it's no good for Dempsey. And the Golden Beavers back the other way as a defensive rebound for Beaver Dam's Parker Stobie. Now Salatel between the rings, over to call, left elbow, fall fake, into the lane, ran into a triple team, trying to be bobbled and then kicked it out. Jack Jens over to Cameron Mendoza in the corner. Back to Jens, round the horn, and wait a minute, we're going the other way. As Salatel was launching that one, we got an offensive foul. And yeah, this one's going to go on 
Parker Stoby, five foot nine inch junior. Stoby, last year, 7.4 a game, 2.3 rebounds, a couple of assists per contest. Right now, the Blackhawks with possession trailing by one. This is Inger. Inger working that left side. Bounce pass to the baseline. Kicked out of there to the top of the key for three. Yes! Lakin Hintz. And it's 5 3 for Atkinson. Lakin Hintz. 7.3 a game last year. And you heard Coach Tim Ladrin of Beaver Den talk about it. He had a big game against the Golden Beavers in Fort Atkinson's win last year here in this building. Looks like we have a foul call. It stops the clock with uh, just a little more than three minutes gone by here in the opening stanza. Mendoza at the free throw line. First one is good. Mendoza, 8.2 points per ball game last year. Four rebounds and two to three assists per game as he drains the second one. Ties the game at five. The foul, by the way, was on Dempsey. That's his first. Team fouls even at one apiece. And Dempsey almost lost it but saved it to Hintz. Now here's Geiger giving it to Anger. Bounce pass left corner. Underhanded back up. Three ball. No good. Short for Hintz and out of bounds. So Beaver Dam will get it back. 14-39, left to play, first half. We are tied at five apiece. Glad you're with us tonight on Daily Dodge TV. And here we go with Salatel. To Jens, over to Stoby. Nice pass back door, and there's Salatel for a reverse layup. Nice ball movement. EJ's got five. The lead is two, seven to five, Beaver Dam, as we approach four minutes in. And on the left side, there's Dempsey to the top of the key for Inger. They go right back towards the left block. And a shot in the lane over Jens. It's going to go for Dempsey. Yeah, muscled his way in, worked against the defense, and scored. We're tied at seven. Stoby between the rings. Mendoza to EJ in the corner. EJ trying to work a little give and go, and it was intercepted and stolen. Here is Inger. Three-point land on the left side for Inger. On the dribble. Gives it to a teammate. That's Hintz. Had it knocked out of his hands. Call saved it momentarily. Nice effort by JT to try and save that one from going out of his. He tried to sidearm it to his teammate Jack Jens, but Jens could not come up with it cleanly. And so that's going to be Fort Atkinson basketball. Braden Hoth, five foot nine inch junior, checks in for head coach Mike Hintz in his 15th year leading the program. Tim Ladron here in Beaver Dam, he's in his 16th season as the bench boss. 7 7, we're all even. 13.09 to go, first half. Head and shoulder fake shot is up. Off the rim, no, won't go. Rebound tipped out. Grabbed at the top of the key. Nice rebound, Geiger, and then a shot. They're going to count it, and one for Dempsey. He's got a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. JT Call tried to get position. And they're going to whistle him for the foul. And Dempsey with a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. Free throw is up, and it is good. Dempsey now with five, and it's 10 to seven. So the Fort Atkinson lead is at three, 12.54 and counting left in the opening half. Mendoza over to the right side. There's Stoby. Back to EJ, and Salatel finds Stoby for three. Off the rim, no. Line drive shot won't go. Paul was trying to track down the rebound, but we had some extracurriculars going on away from the basketball, and on, looks like Jack Jens going to get whistled for contact. That'll be his first, team's third. 
And Parker Blank just checked in, 5'11 sophomore. On the floor now for the Golden Beavers. Who trail by three, wide open three, hints right corner, missed it well short. Offensive board, head and shoulder fake, put back, that won't go. Another offensive board and Dempsey scores. Well, they had, what, two, three, a couple of offensive rebounds there. You get a couple of opportunities, second, third looks. More often than not, you're going to score. And that's what they did, 12-7, Blackhawks. Foul on Ford Atkinson. This one went on Dempsey. Now, that's his second. He's got both Ford Atkinson fouls, as we have... A substitute here. Yeah, Ben Evans came back and Dempsey's going to have to sit down. That hurts Ford Atkinson because he's off to a hot start. Five-point lead, Ford Atkinson. Beaverdam with the rock. Jens, right corner, ball above his head. Looking around, takes off inside the bubble to the top of the key. JT for three. It's off the rim, no. And that rebound out of bounds, and Blank was going for it. So was actually a Jack... Comer was the other player going after that when he had just checked in. 6'1 junior. As we get some personnel set here, Jeff Freund, 6'1 junior now out there for the Golden Beavers and head coach Tim Ladrin. Still 12 to 7, Fort Atkinson. Call double teamed out to Salatel for three left side. Off the rim, no offensive board, Freund. Bounce pass underneath, reverse layup, count it for Parker Blank. And it's 12 to nine, one possession game. Blackhawks lead by three, 11 26 and counting left in the first half. Game number one. So, 14 to nine, Beaverdam trailing by five, but it's early, 10.37 to go until halftime. Pass, and that was Parker Blank that was hassled down low and lost the basketball. Here come the Blackhawks. And that ball tipped out of bounds. Fort will keep possession here. Again, sports at dailydodge.com. If you want to send an email to that, we'd love to hear from you during the broadcast. We'll be happy to give you a shout out. Put boys basketball on the subject line. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. If you've tuned in regularly, you know the drill. As we have a foul on the Golden Beavers. This JT picked up his second, team's fifth. So he's going to have to sit down. We do apologize, but we were having some uh, technical difficulties tonight with the video stream. We're working on it, so hopefully everything has settled down. Sometimes those things happen. This is Enger. Driving against Salatel. Stops near the free throw line. Out to Hintz. Right side pass to the corner. Sent back up to Isaac Labdis, who had just checked in. 5'10", senior. 
Now Hintz spins inside the free throw line, bounce pass out. Here's a drive, ran into a double team, did anger, kicks it to Evans, back over to Jaron Strasburg, a 6'4 junior that is also out there now. Here's a reverse layup, it's no good for Enger. Mendoza clears the glass. Here comes Blank, and that shot is up no good, but he got fouled. As he took it strong to the hole, he put an underhanded shot up. And Evans will pick up the foul here for the Blackhawks. His first, team's third. Here's Blank's first attempt. It is good. Blank now with three in the game. He had a big night. Big, big opening day on Saturday, 11 points in the win over Madison West. I mentioned four Beaverdam players in double figures in the game. Misses the second free throw right on cue. I compliment him and he misses. So it's 14-10. Fort by four, Evans muscling in off the glass. He puts it in. That's his first bucket. 16 to 10. And there's a tip ball that's saved by Blank. Over to EJ. Salatel for three, and he buries it. EJ with his second triple. That's bringing the uh, Golden Beavers back to within a three. 16 13. This is Fort Atkinson with a three point lead and possession. Geiger, bounce pass. Gives it to Dempsey. Back on the left side. And Azzled Geiger and Mendoza forces the turnover. He stood his ground. Geiger tried to throw it off of Mendoza's foot and out of bounds, it didn't work. Mendoza took it away. Three-pointer on the way, it is short for blank. Rebound, Hints. 8-16 and counting, left in the first half. Ford Atkinson, 16, Beaverdam, 13, as the Blackhawks turn it over. So, it will be Jack Jens to inbound. Eight minutes and change left to go in the half. There's a layup counted. Parker Blank scores again. He's got five. We've got a one-point game, 16 to 15. Here's a three, it's an air ball. No good for Enger, but offensive rebound for the Blackhawks. Enger will try again. That one's too strong up the back rim. Blank pulls down the defensive board. Blank to Jens for three left side. No good off the rim. Rebound Geiger. Again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. We'll try and get it worked on here. I've gotten some emails that said the video's frozen or hurt a little jerky. There's a layup, good. Ben Evans, 18-15. Charlie's working on it, I guarantee you. Mendoza, left corner three, yes. Cameron Mendoza with a tray. And we're tied at 18, 6.50 and counting, left in the first half. Been a good one thus far. These two teams fairly evenly matched at this juncture. Geiger, top of the bubble. Sends it over to Anger. Bounce pass down low. Mendoza guarding Evans closely. He bobbled it. Saved it, though. Now Geiger off the screen. Stop. Pull up Jay. 15-footer high off the rim. No. Blank leaps for the rebound. This is Jens. Offensive foul, Jack Jens, as he knocked over Lake and Hintz. The official says Hintz had position. So the score remains tied at 18 apiece. With just over six minutes left in the first half of play. And faking a three was Geiger. Bounce pass to Evans in the left block. Spinning against Mendoza. Double team kicks it out. Hoth 
Hoth has it. Round the horn, right side they go. Here's Geiger. Ran into traffic. Kicks it to the corner. Evans down there. Right back over to Hoth, and now up top. Here's Geiger again. Bounce pass into the left block. Spin move, shot is up, shot is in for Dempsey. Dempsey's got nine in the first half. He's had a really good first half. Beaver Dam has had some trouble con, you know, containing or dealing with him here. Salatel, rainbow three, it's off the rim, no. Rebound for Hoth. As the Blackhawks lead it 20 to 18, here's a three, and another three at the top of the key. Dempsey, I just talked about him. And Dempsey now with a dozen, 23 to 18, back to a five point Fort Atkinson lead, under five minutes left in the half. Nice pass, Mendoza cutting down the lane, scores. EJ found him, Mendoza took the pass, drove hard to the basket and scores, 23 to 20. The Fort Atkinson lead is at three. Spinning is Dempsey. Little one-handed shot over the defender, Freund. Yeah, Dempsey's just having his way, and if he hadn't picked up those two quick fouls, he could have a lot more. Everdam is uh, trying to find an answer for him. Here's Mendoza, corner three, no good from the left side. And as they were fighting for the rebound, we had a whistle, and let's see who this foul is going to go on. It's going to go on Geiger. His first and the team's fourth. Lob pass in. Max Lidke, 6'3", junior, now on the floor for Beaverdam. And Blank had it knocked out of his hands, and well, that's just really good defense by Jack Comer. The 6'1", junior, Flustered him, lost it out of bounds. And the Blackhawks with a 25 to 20 lead, a chance to extend that advantage on this possession. Just under four minutes left first half. Up and under, Dempsey missed that one, got his own rebound and he put it back up and in. Dempsey's going wild here in the first half. 16 points to lead all scores, 27 to 20. Largest lead of the night for Ford, it's at seven. Three ball, no good for Blank. Rebound for Dempsey. Well, he can play that into the floor too. And now, oh, a traveling violation though, as Dempsey fed Geiger, and there was a defender nearby and caused him to, to travel. But yeah, oh my, oh my, Dempsey. 16 points, and again, remember, he sat for a couple of minutes with those two fouls. 326 and counting left in the first half. We're rapidly approaching intermission. Salatel gives it to Mendoza. Mendoza, leaving it off now for Blank. Right back to Salatel. Side arms it into the lane. There's Mendoza. Shoots over the defender, Evans, and scores. He's got nine points. Nice first half for Cam. 27-22 as Beaverdam back within five. 2.52 to go until halftime. Here's Evans working against Mendoza. Back up to Geiger on the bounce pass. He drives inside the bubble. Now sends it over to Hintz. Nice pass down low. Shot, I don't know if that was partially blocked, but Comer was going for a shot and he missed it from close range. Might have been altered, couldn't quite tell. 2.38 left until the break. And now the officials, they're changing the call. They were initially were gonna go the other way and they're saying, no, it's Ford Atkinson basketball. They discussed it and they came to the conclusion that the call, initial call was wrong. Evans missed the turnaround J. There's JT call with a rebound, throwing it ahead. And this is a shot, three pointer, no good for Parker Blank. Parker Scobie, I should say. 
He missed, and here comes Geiger. We got we got to keep my Parkers straight on this Beaver Dam team. Here's a drive. Oh, and that one in and out, no good for Geiger. How did that one not go down? And a three ball, it's no good for Parker. Blank from the right corner, but Fort Atkinson quickly back the other way. Little alley-oop intended for Evans. Mendoza was there to hustle and knock it out of bounds. Exactly two minutes left in this first half. First game of the season for Fort Atkinson. Second game for Beaver Dam. First conference game in the Badger Large for both of these teams. 27-22, Blackhawks lead the Golden Beavers. And with it here is Geiger to the left side on the three ball, no good. Missed by Hintz. Beaver Dam with a chance to cut into the deficit. Salatel, three from the left side, no good. Mendoza, box out, rebound, and he scores. And a timeout called, full timeout with a minute 25 left in the half. We're back in one minute. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV. When it comes to a winning lineup, turn to the selection of new and pre-owned vehicles at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam. Their team goes the extra mile to provide a winning experience from hassle-free financing options to exceptional customer service. It's like having a dedicated cheering section cheering you on in every step of the vehicle purchase. Give the team at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam a call at 920-885-3301 or visit napleton151.com and find new roads with their winning inventory. No, we got to make sure you have an Ethernet cable because... In today's financial markets, you will find all your needs met at Park Village Shopping Center. Time is right for a home equity line of credit. The folks at Horicon Bank can make those home remodel dreams a reality. Searching for sound financial advice? Kevin Smith of Edward Jones will help you make sense of your investments. Kevin knows the market inside and out. Nightberry Title meets all your title needs, from commercial to residential. The team at Nightberry is your partner for success. This is why you hear people say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center. You should too. Park Village Shopping Center. Well, we've got a minute 25 left in the first half. Tight game, 27-24, Fort Atkinson. Leading Beaver Dam and off the timeout, the Blackhawks will bring it ahead. And here we go. A bounce pass to the left side. Owen Geiger... Takes a return feed from Caleb Enger. Enger and Geiger just playing catch over there. Now it's left off for Strasburg. Back to Geiger. Here's Owen Geiger off the screen. Stops near the free throw line. Sends it over to Hintz left side. Hintz, post feed. Nice pass, and the layup is no good, but Evans, who took that lob pass, got fouled on his way to the rack. Cameron Mendoza with his second foul, team's seventh. And here's Evans at the free throw line. Got four points already in this one. First one is good. One more coming up for Evans. 28-24, Blackhawks. Next one's on the way. Missed that one off the back rim. And a foul looks to be on Comer here as he was fighting for the rebound along with Salatel. So EJ will toss it in. Parker Stovey is there, and he's going to leisurely trot it up the floor. He'll cross the midcourt stripe. 40 seconds left in the half. And driving was blank and lost it out of bounds. There was a defender there. But blank loses it out of bounds. And now with 38.1 seconds left in the half, Fort Atkinson leading by four and a chance to add to that lead here prior to the break. This is Inger. 
Pass to the right baseline for Owen Geiger. Turn around, Jay, right over Salatel. He scores. 30 to 24, Fort by six. 13 seconds left in the half. Everdam looks like they want to go the last shot here. Why not? And this is a three ball blocked at the horn. Parker Blank got blocked by Hintz as he launched that three right before the horn. So that is the way the first half comes to an end. We played 18 minutes of basketball here inside the field house and our score at the break is Fort Atkinson 30 and Beaver Dam 24. Stay with us. Our halftime report comes up. We'll take a four minute break back in four minutes on Daily Dodge TV. At Preferred Dental Partners, our core values are more than just something we put on our wall. There's something we live out. Core value number two is the wow experience. This means that from the moment you walk in the door until the time you leave, we want to provide an experience for our patients that is unlike anything you've had before. There are lots of choices of dentists, and we never want anyone to feel they have to be here. We want them to choose to be here because they feel heard, welcomed, and well cared for. If you want to see what the wow experience is about, call or text Preferred Dental Partners today. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all Beaver Dam athletes. While at home watching high school sports, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy comfort studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. percent off the most awarded SUV ever, the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee and Grand Cherokee L at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dan. Hello, this is Brent Reed, and this deal is so good, I've got to say it again. 15% off brand new 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokees during the Black Friday sales event. That's over $10,000 in savings on select models. This is going to be a Black Friday like no other. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our Silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop Silica for your home for the best sales, service, and selection. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. We are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. 
Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. Half time here inside the BDHS Fieldhouse alongside my videographer and engineer Charlie Dern. Mike Tronson with you for Daily Dodge TV. At the break, Badger Large Boys Basketball. It is Fort Atkinson in front of Beaver Dam by the score of 30 to 24. And we welcome you into our halftime report. Tonight's game brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Beaver Dam Tire and Service, and Mayville Tire and Service, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM and Beaver Dam and White Construction. Well, the Beaver Dam Unified School District, talented students and exceptional staff, our school communities have earned 27 Wisconsin School of Recognition Awards, four top ranking recognitions by U.S. News and World Reports, and three National Blue Ribbon Awards for Excellence. The Beaver Dam Unified School District, where small town connections and values Meet big town resources and opportunities. Learn more about your child joining our BD fam by visiting our website at www.bdusd.org or schedule an appointment for a visit. And you can do that by calling 920-885-7300. Looking at the first half scoring for Fort Atkinson. Oh, boy. Brian, uh, Brennan Dempsey, big, big first half. 16 points to lead all scorers in the game, including... One from downtown. Ben Evans with five points for Fort Atkinson. Owen Geiger with four. Lakin Hintz drained a three, so he finished the half with three. And Caleb Anger chipped in two. Meanwhile, on the Beaver Dam side, Cameron Mendoza doing most of the damage. He had 11 points in that first half. It was E.J. Salatel with eight, including a pair of three-point baskets and Parker Blank chipped in five. Fairly tight game most of the half, but again, the story, as I've been talking about, is Brennan Dempsey. He's been just outstanding for Fort Atkinson. Beaver Dam has struggled with him. They really haven't had an answer for Dempsey inside tonight, and uh, so they're going to have to figure out a way to try and slow him down in the second half. Dempsey, uh, 16 points. And he leads all scores in this game by a long shot. Uh, earlier tonight, JV game, Beaver Dam was victorious, 42 to 37. Meanwhile, in the JV2 game, Fort Atkinson with a 52-41 win earlier this evening. Halftime here inside the field house, it's 30 to 24 in favor of Fort Atkinson. We'll take a two-minute break. We're back in two minutes after this on Daily Dodge TV. The comfort in your home is too important to trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to bring our community the heating and cooling services you deserve. Expect nothing short of excellence in service, installation, and 24-7 emergency service. As a premier Lennox dealer, we carry the best in equipment to bring you and your home peace of mind. Schedule your annual maintenance or claim your free in-home estimate today, 920-485-4883. Surefire, keeping what's important comfortable since 1947. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. The teams at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service are growing and adding service technicians and auto lube technicians. Work in a clean shop environment with a fun and friendly team that is committed to excellence and customer satisfaction. Competitive pay based on experience, full benefits, including health, dental, 401k. 
Join the growing team at Beaverdam and Mayville Tire and Service. Find full job postings on Facebook or visit either location to submit your resume. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Aircare and Beaverdam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our Total Care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. Just about ready to start the second half. In the second half tonight, they'll switch it up. Beaver Dam goes left to right across your video screen, and Fort Atkinson will go right to left. 30 to 24. Blackhawks lead the Golden Beavers as we have a fresh 18 minutes on the board. And as we start the second half, Beaver Dam will inbound at midcourt. As a lob pass in from Salatel to Parker Stobie. And the second half is underway. Bounce pass to Mendoza in the left block. Up to Stobie for three. In and out and back in again. Parker Stobie, the line drive triple. That's a good way to start the half. 30 to 27 as it's down to a one possession game. And it's been fairly tight, I believe. The largest lead of the night was seven, if I'm not mistaken. Otherwise, it's been fairly close since the get-go. There's a turnover. It's a call. I head to Salatel, and he goes in for a layup, finishes with a right hand. 30 to 29. Beaver Dam's within one, a 5-0 run to start the half. Well, that shot is up off the rim. No for Enger. And as Jens was going for the rebound, a foul is going to be called on Owen Geiger. That'll be his second. Team's first of the half. Hey, good energy for the Golden Beavers coming out here in the second half. As I mentioned they're on a little 5-0 run to start the half. Now they can take the lead. They can score on this possession. Salatel giving it to Jens. Around the horn, there's Mendoza, left corner, right in front of his own bench. He drives into the lane, floats one up, and off the glass, it's in. Mendoza with 13. Beaverdam has the lead, 31-30. to 30. A 7-0 run for the Golden Beavers to open the half. They've gone from six down to one up. Minute 35 into the second stanza. Anger, the near side. Looking for a teammate. One hands it across court. Dempsey back to Anger. He goes to the left baseline. Shot is up off the rim. No rebound was tipped and grabbed by Stoby. One hands it to Call. Call left baseline. Floater and he got it. JT. That's his first bucket. And that's something we didn't talk about in the first half. But I mean, he's got 25 points the other day. JT Call averaged 13 points a game last year. I mean, he's your top returning scorer, and he had no points in the first half. I would suffice. There's a steal. Turnover, and here comes Salatel. Shot nobody got fouled. And he will go to the line to shoot two. And boy, this looks like a completely different Beaver Dam team here to start the half. But yeah, I mean, if you're, I'm, I'm sure Coach Ladrin would nod his head. You can't have your top scorer being held scoreless in the first half, or any half for that matter. And there is the first free throw up and good for EJ. I've got him for 11 points now. 34 to 30. And make it 35 to 30. An 11-0 run to open the half now. Dempsey double team. Jens knocks it out of bounds. Ford Atkinson going to keep possession. About two and a half minutes gone, second half. 
Here's Anger high on the right. Bounce pass to Owen Geiger. And Geiger, back to Caleb Anger. Back to Geiger as they play catch up top. He's on the near wing. Bounce, actually, pass was inadvertently kicked by Jens. And Geiger inbounds. Takes a return feed from Anger. Now right back to Caleb Anger. Into the lane. Out to Geiger in three-point land. Bounce pass right block. And that pass was intended for a cutting Geiger, but he could not handle it and went out of bounds. And boy, Fort Atkinson, what a great first half. They looked a little discombobulated here coming out in the second half. 35 to 30. Beaver Dam with the lead. Salatel found a seam, goes in, layup, count it. He turned on the Jets. There was nobody there. Defense didn't get there in time. 37 to 30. 13 0 run for Beaver Dam to open the half. Wow. This is Inger inside the free throw line. One hands it to the baseline. Spin move, Dempsey almost lost the handle on it. Back up to Inger along the sideline, right near his own bench, far side. Geiger takes a cross-court feed to the corner. Hints for three, missed it short. Rebound, it's grabbed there by Parker Stobie. Ahead to Jens. Salatel, right base and move, back to Jens. Quick pass up top. Call around the horn, Stobie fakes the three. Driving, layup, got it! And a timeout for Atkinson. 13.57 to go in the ball game. It is now 39 to 30. Beaver Dam, they have opened up the second half on a 15-0 run. We're gonna take a one minute break. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all Beaver Dam athletes. While at home watching high school sports, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy Comforters, sectionals, and reclining sofas. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. Is selling your home like a walk in the park? If you are in Central Park at 2 a.m., maybe. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. When it is time to sell, be it due to loss or love, growth or downsizing, staying near or going far, there are three basic steps. List it, sell it, move on. The steps are made simple by working with a trusted real estate advisor. Our family team is with you every step of the way, making those three steps as smooth and fun as possible. Kladowski Real Estate, we look forward to serving you. All right, after the timeout, Fort Atkinson with possession, but a brand new ball game. 39 to 30, Beaver Dam leads now. Beaver Dam trailed by six at the half. They're now up nine, courtesy of a 15-0 run, which is still in progress. Shot in and out, no good for Dempsey. Rebound, Jens. Stobie underhands it to Jens. Nice pass, wide open on the baseline, Salatel. Nobody was on him. Salatel with eight points in the half, 16 in the game, a 17-0 run, and it's 41 to 30. Beaver Dam. And there's a travel on Dempsey. And Dempsey, who did all that damage in the first half, a little frustrated right now along with his teammates. And Dempsey was a one-man wrecking crew in the first half tonight. 16 points he had prior to the break. And it tried a little give and go there, didn't work, pass intercepted. We played just about five minutes of this second half. Lob pass on the near side, this is Hoth. To Dempsey, back to Hoth for three, high off the rim, no. And a defensive rebound, here comes JT Call, through the center circle. Right side for Jens on the elbow, into the lane, ran into a double team, kicks it back out, Call will one hand it. Uh, gives it to E.J. Salatel. Salatel up top on the left. Bounce pass, leaves it off for Mendoza, top of the silo. Pass into the lane, call, catches, shoots, up and scores! Call! Kind of threw that one up. Almost, I don't want to call it a prayer, but he, he threw it up with 
Probably wasn't the uh, highest uh, odds to make that, but he did. There's a three-pointer for Owen Geiger. And so that ends the run. Beaver Dam with a 19-0 run to start the half, and it's over now, courtesy of that three, and now a turnover as Call loses it, stripped by Dempsey. That's, that's impressive. 19-0 run finally ended by the three there a moment ago. Well, you know, and if you're Fort Atkinson, okay, rough start to the half, to say the least, but you're still within 10, plenty of time here. 11.48 left to go in the second half. So there is a ball kicked out of bounds, Jens. Blackhawks will keep possession. So if you're the, if you're the, the Blackhawks here, okay, yeah, it was, I mean, it is what it is, but you're still within 10. You still have almost... 12 minutes to play. So don't think that this game is over just yet. Here's Hoth. Bounce pass, right side, they go around the horn. Into the corner, back up to Hoth. He drives into the lane, sends it back up to the right elbow. Three ball, it's no good for Geiger. Rebound Mendoza. Fires it ahead, call. Into the lane, going in for a layup. Count it and one. JT Call turned on the afterburners, and he's got a chance for a three-point opportunity. Brayton Hoth with the foul, his first, team's third, and JT at the line, drains it. Well, JT certainly has heated up here in the second half seven points in the first seven minutes roughly of this half. That's after he did not score prior to halftime. 46-33. So Beaver Dam now up 13. Evans, they kick it to the right corner. Three ball. It is no good. Fighting for the rebound. Mendoza got it off the miss by Evans. Jens. Mendoza flips it right back to Jens. Cutting down the lane. Missed it wide left. Mendoza. Offensive board. Put back. He uses the glass and scores. Timeout. Fort Atkinson. 10.34 to go in the game. 48-33. Beaver Dam will take a one minute break. Back in one minute Daily Dodge TV. Cheer. Now cheer louder. Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it's a commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their Spirit Pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Well, don't forget to tune in to the monthly Let's Talk radio show with Superintendent Mark DiStefano on the third Thursday of the month at 11.10 a.m. on 95.3 WBEV, the Beaver Dam Unified School District, guiding students, empowering futures. Mike Tronson back inside the BDHS Fieldhouse. 10.34 left in the game. A Badger Large boys basketball matchup. And Fort Atkinson with possession, but trailing Beaver Dam 48 to 33. Beaver Dam opened this half on a 19 nothing run to vault ahead after they trailed by six at the break. There's a shot inside the free throw, no good, but an offensive board for Inger. Geiger missed a baseline jumper, and Mendoza the rebound throws it ahead. Call catches up. He'll spot up for three, short. Missed that one, Owen Geiger with the defensive rebound. 
Here's Inger at the other end. Inger backs up a little bit. Now a launch of three. Off the back iron, it's no good. Jens got the deflection. Beaver Dam basketball, 9.42 left in the ballgame. So this is called. Bounce pass. Mendoza finds Jens. <clears throat> Jens looking for help, gives it back to JT Call. Pass to a cutting Jens, and he got fouled on his way to the rack. Stops the clock with 9.18 to go in this ball game. We've got a couple of emails to get to here. As Jens at the line missed the first one. This one says, go Beavers. Shout out to E.J. Salatel from Grab... Excuse me there. Uh, shout out to E.J. from Grandma and Grandpa. They're in the field house tonight. Second free throw good. Forty-nine thirty-three. Exactly nine minutes left. Anger trying to go back door. Shot is up and in. Nice pass. Ben Evans took that pass on the back door. 49 35 as he scores. 8 40 to go in, in this one. Jens now gives it to Mendoza. Underhanded flip to call. Driving through traffic. What a move by JT. Like a hot knife through butter. Sliced through the defense. Scores 51-35. BD leading Fort. Free ball, anger. No, nope, beg your pardon. That was Isaac Labdus that missed. Rebound knocked out of bounds. Looks like it's going to stay on... The end to our left here. Eight minutes, eight seconds left. Blackhawks keep possession. But trailing by 16. Here is Anger looking down to Evans, and that one sails out of bounds. Let's see, I got another email to get to here. This one says, let's go Beavers. Checking in on the way home from wheelchair basketball practice. That's from Taylor Post. Taylor, nice to hear from you tonight. Thank you very much. Do appreciate it. Sports at dailydodge.com if you want to check in before the end of the game. All right, here is Salatel giving it to call again. JT sends it cross court for Parker Blank. Long pass, and that one uh, too much mustard on it as it sails out of bounds. He was trying to go to the right corner for JT Collin. He sailed that one out into the uh, common area here at the high school. Bounce pass tipped in the lane, stolen by Jens. A lot of traffic there. They tried to thread the needle. Deep three call. No good. Mendoza got the offensive board, and he is fouled underneath the basket. Lake and Ince just picked up the foul. Blank gets it in. Left corner three. Short. And they're fighting for the rebound, and Hintz came away with it after the miss by call. And he gets it back. Blank for three. Hit the side of the backboard. And foul on Beaverdam. Let's see who this one's going on. Jack Jens, actually. His third team's, that's only the first foul of the half. 
on the Golden Beavers. Three ball, line drive, three in and out, no good for Labdis. As they were fighting for the rebound, we had a whistle and another foul. Mendoza picks up his third. Second of the half for the Golden Beavers. 6.47 left and a 16-point Beaver Dam lead. That one is up. It is no good but a foul as Dempsey will head to the free throw line. The foul was on Salatel. Dempsey, 16 points in the first half, and he is now at the free throw line. And the first one is good. That is his first point of the second half. Monster first half, and Beaver Dam has clamped down on him and the entire Blackhawks team here in the second half. Second one, good. Just over six and a half minutes to play. 51-36, Beaver Dam. Beaver Dam has held Fort Atkinson to just six points in this second half. And we played almost 12 minutes. That's pretty good. Jens, bounce pass to the block. Mendoza to Salatel. He'll float one up, and EJ floats it in. 18 points tonight for EJ Salatel, 10 of them here in the second half. Just under six minutes left, 53-37. Beaver Dam, there's a shot in and out, no good for Evans. Everything but the finish, unfriendly rim. Mendoza got the rebound. And here's Call, side me to the corner. Blank to Mendoza, high off the glass. Blank with the helper, Mendoza high off the glass for two more. 55-37, and we're going the other way with 5.32 left. My goodness, what a second-half performance here by the Golden Beavers, both offensively and defensively. I don't know what was said at halftime in the locker room. It ought to be a fly on the wall. I'm not saying that Tim Ladrin laid into the guys, but wow, what a turnaround. What a turnaround. I mean, what, it's not that they played that poorly in the first half. I mean, you look at it, I mean, Dempsey was doing most of the damage. So other than the problems they had with Dempsey, they actually did a pretty good job on the rest of the team. But here's a three ball in and out, no good for Jens. So I guess if you think about it that way, it's not like they were playing that poorly. I mean, okay, they were down six at half, but nothing insurmountable. Three ball, yes, from the left side is good for Braden Hoth. 4.49 left, 55 to 40. So the Beaver Dam lead is at 15. Jens, right side, call, three ball, yes! JT! He's got 10 points in the half. And the lead is at 18 with 4.26 and counting left in the game. And we've got a foul as Geiger was driving. Well, after tonight's game, Ford Atkinson will be uh, back in action on Friday. This coming Friday night's their home opener as uh, Oregon comes to town. 7.15 start. And there's a pass in lane. was knocked loose and stolen. Call the other way. He's going to let traffic catch up. Meanwhile, Beaver Dam has a big game this coming Thursday night. Their first road game, it's at Watertown. And a drive by JT, and he scores again. In fact, we'll be broadcasting that game Thursday at Watertown. I'll be there for that one. It'll be on radio only, though, on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. You can also listen to the audio stream on dailydodge.com. 
7.15 tip, 7 o'clock pregame Thursday night. As we have a whistle foul here on Fort. But yeah, I'll be down there for that one Thursday night. Should be a good one. As Beaverdam and Watertown will do battle in Badger Large Boys Hoops. Pre-game show again around 7 o'clock on Thursday. Hopefully I'll be over this uh, head cold that I've been battling here the last few days by then. And JT buries the trifecta. Fifteen points and a half for JT. Sixty-three to forty. Beaverdam leads Fort Atkinson. Clock running. Three minutes to go. Here is Anger. Shot off the rim. No in the rebound. Taken by Call. Call. Out to EJ for a deep three. Rainbow three is well short. Off the front of the rim. Evans the rebounds the miss, and here's Inger across the timeline. Little lob pass to the right side. Geiger launches a shot just inside the arc. It's no good. Bouncing around the rebound. Grabbed by Salatel. EJ up the right wing side. They go around the horn. Here's a drive-by call. Left baseline in. Count it and one. Boy, JT has been a man on a mission here in this second half. My, oh, my. <laughs> 17 points for Call. He's going to shoot one. As Ford Atkinson putting some uh, subs in here, kind of emptying the bench, as it were, with 2.19 to go. 65 to 40 is your score. Beaverdam's up 25. Free throws up and good. This is why they play 36 minutes and not 18 minutes, folks. Prime example of that here tonight. Beaverdam down six at halftime, and uh, they have dominated the second half. Here's a drive off the rim, no good. That's uh, Elliot Pease, 5'8", senior, that's out there now for head coach Mike Hintz. Free ball from the corner, no good. Pease gets the rebound. Let's see who else is out there. Labdus is back out there. Sharon Strasburg is back out there. He's got the ball. He'll pass, they go left side. Three ball, it is no good for Kellen Jacobson. He had checked in, 5'11", junior. And there's a steal, turnover. Labdus comes away with it. Stops near the free throw line as traffic catches up. Dalton Lietzau was also on the floor as he came in with that last dead ball. Minute 20 to go. That shot is in for Lietzau. So 70 seconds left, 66 to 42. Beaverdam leads. And a three ball is good on the right side. Riley Doyle. We're talking about all the subs that came in for Fort. Riley Doyle, 5'11 junior, comes in and hits a three ball. Lidke's out there along with Doyle. Who else is out there? Nick Krasinski, 5'11 sophomore. Shot is up off the rim, no. Lidke the rebound. Krasinski seeing some action. Doyle, as I mentioned. Cruz Rohde, 5'11 sophomore out there. There's a shot up and in. Doyle again. Doyle's got five points here. 71-42. 25 seconds left. So we wind this one down. Here's a shot off the rim. No. Falling down was Jackson Ladrin, the coach's son, and off the turnover, a layup. Sharon Strasburg. But that'll do it. As the horn sounds, final score tonight in Badger Large Boys Basketball. 
What a rally in the second half. Beaver Dam 71 and Fort Atkinson 42. Golden Beavers now 2 0 on the young season, 1 0 in the Badger Large. Fort Atkinson, they uh, opened the season 0 1, but you know what? Long way to go, folks. A lot of games to be played, but what a, what a rally in this one by the Golden Beavers to come from six down at the break, and they win this one going away. Tell you what we'll do. We'll take a three-minute break. We'll come back. We'll have our post-game show. We'll get head coach Tim Ladrin up here for some comments, and uh, we'll give you some final numbers. Let's take a three-minute break. Back in three minutes on Daily Dodge TV. When it comes to a winning lineup, turn to the selection of new and pre-owned vehicles at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam. Their team goes the extra mile to provide a winning experience from hassle-free financing options to exceptional customer service. It's like having a dedicated cheering section cheering you on in every step of the vehicle purchase. Give the team at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam a call at 920-885-3301 or visit napleton151.com and find new roads with their winning inventory. In today's financial markets, you will find all your needs met at Park Village Shopping Center. Time is right for a home equity line of credit. The folks at Horicon Bank can make those home remodel dreams a reality. Searching for sound financial advice? Kevin Smith of Edward Jones will help you make sense of your investments. Kevin knows the market inside and out. Knightberry Title meets all your title needs, from commercial to residential. The team at Knightberry is your partner for success. This is why you hear people say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center. You should too. Park Village Shopping Center. 15% off the most awarded SUV ever, the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee and Grand Cherokee L at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dan. Hello, this is Brent Reed, and this deal is so good, I've got to say it again. 15% off brand new 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokees during the Black Friday sales event. That's over $10,000 in savings on select models. This is going to be a Black Friday like no other. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our Silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop Silica for Your Home for the best sales, service, and selection. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. We are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. The comfort in your home Summit is too Ford important Beaver to Dam. trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to bring our community the heating and cooling services you deserve. Expect nothing short of excellence in service, installation, and 24-7 emergency service. As a premier Lennox dealer, we carry the best in equipment to bring you and your home peace of mind. Schedule your annual maintenance or claim your free in-home estimate today, 920-485-4883. Surefire, keeping what's important comfortable since 1947. And welcome back inside the BDHS Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson with you for Daily Dodge TV. Charlie Dern is here, my videographer and engineer. And Beaver Dam head coach Tim Ladrin is here. His squad tonight with an impressive 71-44 win over Fort Atkinson. 
Coach, congratulations on the win. Wow, down six at the break, <laughs> and you open up the second half on a 19 to nothing run, and you outscore them 47 to 14 Ooh. in the second half. Wow. Um, did you say something at halftime to these kids? That was an incredible turnaround. Well, obviously we changed defenses there, and that, yeah. you know, um, and you know we. They got us inside a little bit in that first half defensively, and, and so we, we feel like we need to make a change, and um, I feel like that's a little bit of bread and butter for us that when we change to. But um, on the offensive end, we needed to slow down. Like, we want to play out in transition, but then in the half court, we were spacey and taking bad shots and just being too quick in the half court. And then we just, everybody needed to, like, take a breath and settle down and, Run, the, run our offense, because the way we've been running stuff, I mean, we've been getting open looks for a lot of guys, and but we weren't giving ourselves, even, we weren't even giving ourselves a chance in the first half. And uh, guys made a nice adjustment, and um, that was the result. Well, you know, and I, I said it during the, the broadcast, Tim, and you can maybe elaborate here, but I said, okay, you were down six at the break, but other than the issues you were having inside with Dempsey, who had a big first half, mm -hmm. I didn't think you played that poorly in the first half. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were right there, but it just, you know, you were, you, it was obviously you were struggling with, with their big guy in the middle. Yeah, you know, the, the issue there was a couple bigs, right? So the 6'7 yeah. kid and the Dempsey 6'5, right. and then, you know, if, for matchups for us with our lack of size, it becomes tough. And then, you know, we had Cameron, Jack, and JT all with two fouls in the first half. So, you know, we had to battle that a little bit, and we just kind of struggled a little bit with that. And then, um, but, you know, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things I told our guys. I said, we didn't play very well, and we're down only six. Let's just calm down a little bit and, you know, play basketball. And, um, you know, our guys, you know, like I said, you know, and it helps. Come out, Stobes hits a three right out of the gate to start the half. We create a turnover on the other side, get an at one, and, then all, you know, now everybody's, instead of being tight, we've loosened up. And, and, the, and the fact is this, these guys have had our number the last two years. And you could kind of see it. The guy, you know, we got everybody returning, and you could see how it felt maybe with first half last year. And I think that was kind of part of our tightness. And um, we just we needed something good to happen, and we got a really good thing going that first couple possessions, and it kind of carried over. Yeah, I, I wondered. I didn't really address it on the broadcast, but I wondered maybe just a little bit if that, you know, after what happened the last couple of years, maybe started to creep in a little bit in the first half. But uh, credit to your guys. I mean, they, they stuck with it, and, boy, second half was a complete 180. Yeah, and, and, and again, it's, you know, our guys did a really good job defensively, and that's where it started. Um, really great on the glass, great on the glass the second half. Um, Cameron, Cameron, I thought Cameron was the one who really, really spurred us along. Defensively, he was great. Um, we have him for a double-double at 17 and 10. Um, that's the first double-double that we've had in a long time. Uh, in fact, I think the last one we had might have been Brady Helbing, and that was that was uh, points and assists. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I might I think the last one might have been like Broden Bosher, and I'd have to look oh, wow. back. I'd okay. have to look back oh, wow. yeah. at my at, at some of our stuff. But um, it, you know he was he, you know and that's the type of force that Cameron can bring to us. Um, you know he he's you know defensively a factor, but then when when we're getting him off offensive rebounds and screen and rolls and things like that, and he's such a good passer out of there too that he becomes a he becomes a real problem. And we really saw him kind of blossom tonight through that. And everybody else kind of fed through that. You know, we had some guys, had some big shots. I tell you, I, I, maybe the biggest shot of the night was Stobie's right at the top of the key to start the second half. I felt like that just kind of loosened everybody up. And that, that was off a kick out from Cam. Yeah, you know, you and I have talked in the past, you know, about Cam. And, you know, he's, he's so versatile what he can do for you in the middle of that offense. Mm -hmm. and, and he really is uh, quite a presence. And I think it was on display, as you said tonight, watching him. Not only with his scoring, I mean, he was, yeah, I had him for 17 points too, but what he can do with dishing the ball, rebounding, you know, you yeah. name it. I mean, he's he's really a nice presence for you in there. Yeah, he is. And, again, the offensive rebound thing for us was a huge thing for him. But then, again, he really, you know, was a big factor for us on the defensive side. And, you know, he had a couple of those long outlets to JT, you know, when we are in the middle of that run off a rebound and looking ahead and getting a couple of easy baskets. And that is just yeah, a really solid all-around game, obviously, for him. I think it's his best game that he's had for us. Well, three players and double figures, and once you guys got going, I mean, the things the guys started to settle down, as you mentioned, and uh, you know, two and zero. Oh, that's that's a great start to the season. More importantly, you're one and zero oh in the Badger yeah. Large with another big conference game looming in 48 hours.
Yeah, we got a tough schedule. <laughs> like it, 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 it's you know we get the Watertown games can be very difficult down there, and they're a really good team. They're super athletic, and they shoot the three really well. And they're they're going to be a handful, especially in their gym. And then uh, then we go to Cudahy on Saturday. So we have four games in eight days to start the season. Um, but uh, you know we, we, it's just always we take it one game at a time. And this is the you know we we worry about this one first. And um, obviously the big second half was a big factor. Well, congratulations to you and the boys on the win. Uh, outstanding second half. And uh, we're going to be down there, by the way, uh, in uh, Watertown on Thursday. It's going to be a, a, a radio broadcast on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. I'll be heading down and uh, looking forward to that one already, Tim. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Thanks yeah. for stopping up. Thank you. All right, that's Tim Ladron, head coach of Beaver Dam, joining us on the postgame show tonight. His team a winner as the Golden Beavers knock off Fort Atkinson by the score of 71 to 44. Let's run down the final individual scoring from this one. And for victorious Beaver Dam as they go to 2 and 0 on the young season, 1 and 0 in Badger large play. I mentioned that they had three players in double figures led by EJ Salatel and JT Call, 18 points each for those fellas. And Cameron Mendoza right behind with the double double, 17 points and 10 boards. Outstanding night for him. Uh, let's see, also for Beaver Dam, a couple players with five points each, Parker Blank and Parker Stoby. The Parkers, the Parker brothers. Well, they're not brothers, but um, the Parkers with five and uh, five points each. And then, uh, let's see, oh, Riley Doyle had five off the bench. So we had three guys with five points each. Uh, Jack Jens hit three points in the second half, and he rounds out the scoring with three. Meanwhile, on the Fort Atkinson side, uh, Brennan Dempsey, 18 points, 16 of those came prior to, to halftime. He only had those two free throws and no field goals in the second half. Uh, Owen Geiger with seven. Ben Evans I had for seven. Uh, Braden Hoth with a three-pointer late. He finished with three. Lakin Hintz had a, a triple. He finished with three. Jaron Strasburg, Dakota Lizzo, and Caleb Enger all with two points apiece for the Blackhawks is they fall to 0-1 overall and 0-1 in uh, Badger large play. I mentioned it earlier, but uh, for Fort Atkinson, their home opener is this Friday. They'll play Oregon at 7:15, and then next Tuesday night, a week from tonight, they uh, are back on the road at Stoughton. You uh, heard Tim Ladron and I talk about it, but uh, Beaver Dam is at Watertown on Thursday night. We're going to have that game for you on radio. 14:30 ESPN Beaver Dam is streaming on uh, DailyDodge.com. And you can tune in at uh, 7 o'clock for the pregame show Thursday night. 7.15 will be the opening tip of that one. So we hope you'll join us for that as Beaver Dam will have another tough conference test and try to stay unbeaten on the young season going into that one. That's going to pretty much uh, wrap things up here from the Fieldhouse. We want to uh, thank all of our sponsors that made this broadcast possible. Our presenting video sponsors are Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Beaver Dam Tire and Service, and Mayville Tire and Service, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM and Beaver Dam, and White Construction. 71-44, your final as Beaver Dam defeats Fort Atkinson. It's going to wrap it up. Thanks for uh, tuning in tonight, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Apologize again for some of the technical issues that we had. I want to thank Charlie Dern, my videographer and engineer. And for Charlie, Mike Tronson saying so long from the field house. Have a pleasant evening. Stay warm and enjoy the rest of your night. This has been a Daily Dodge TV 